Welcome to Jackets TV presented by Ohio Health. I'm Bob McElligot here with the general manager of the Blue Jackets, Scott Housen. And Scott, this summer when you were spending so much time putting together this roster, I'm sure the last thing you envisioned was a start like this. How disappointing has it been for you to have the record your team has? Well, it's been disappointing for everybody. Um, uh, we didn't anticipate this. Uh, we've had some obstacles to overcome, but uh, we should have been able to get more points out of the first 12 games than we've gotten. But we can't change the last, uh, the first 12 games. We can only change what's in front of us, and that's what we're focused on doing. We've seen some positive signs here over the last week, and uh, it's up to our players, our coaches, and uh, the management staff to make sure we continue to uh, build on the, on the positives we saw last week. And one of the biggest positives was James Wisniewski returning to the lineup after serving an eight-game suspension uh, to start the regular season. Just having him back, I know he's logging almost 30 minutes a game on the ice, but what about the entire aspect of having him back, starting in the dressing room before the game, leading to what he does on the ice, and just the entire package? Yeah, James brings uh, confidence to your team. He, uh, he's an aggressive player. He's, uh, he's a vocal player in the dressing room, so he brings energy to your team. He brings the energy level up before the game. And then certainly uh, during the games, he plays with an edge. He has some offensive ability. We've seen that now. Um, he seems to have paired really well with Feder Tutin, and they had a pretty, uh, pretty good week last week in terms of their production and in terms of what they brought to the hockey team. So he's had a really positive impact in the short time so far. Somebody just asked me about Feder Tutin the other day and about you know, how good of a defenseman is he going to be. And I made this analogy, and you tell me if, if you agree with this. You mentioned how he and James are playing so well together. I think Feder's a very good defenseman, maybe not the guy that wants to be in the spotlight, but certainly happy with being the other guy there that's going to get you under the radar. So Wisniewski can be that spotlight kind of guy, but there's Feder Tutin right there lurking. Yeah, that's his personality. He's, uh, he's not one that seeks... Uh, out the spotlight for himself. Uh, he's probably a little uncomfortable with the spotlight, but Fetter's a really good player. He does so many things well for our hockey team. He's got size, he makes good passes, uh, he defends well, he helps the power play. Um, he's a good skater, so he's a real, really key component of our hockey club. Jeff Carter is another guy that you thought would be a key component and will be a key component, don't get me wrong, but right now he's been on the shelf with a foot injury. Again, injuries are something you have to live with in the National Hockey League. Some teams will get them early, some teams will get them in the middle, some teams will get them late, but I'm sure you would have rather had him out there a lot early. Yeah, I, you know, obviously he's, uh, he was our, uh, him and James were the key acquisitions this summer, and uh, the good news on Jeff is he is getting better. Um, I don't think it's going to be too much longer before he starts skating, and then uh, hopefully when he starts skating we can get him into games fairly soon. So. Uh, He's going to uh, you know, help our hockey club in, in more ways than one. He's going to uh, play at center on the top line, probably with Rick, and then uh, other people get put in the right positions, and, and it'll just make our, our team better. If I would have made a for fun bet with you during training camp and said, I'll bet you within the first month Alan York will make his first NHL start in goal, would you have taken that bet? <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, I, that's what, what's happened with the goaltending has been uh, phenomenal, and I, I think last Tuesday when Steve went down and, and uh, I was sitting up watching that, I thought, uh, what, what else could go wrong? And uh, thankfully Steve came back, that was a nice surprise. But if Steve had gone down, that would have been really something. But we're working through that. Uh, both Mark Dekanich and Curtis Sanford are on the mend. We expect Mark Dekanich to make a, a uh, start in Springfield, probably, uh, probably not this Friday, the next Friday. And uh, so that's really good news for us. Steve Mason, he becomes the, the center of fire, I guess, by a lot of people. That goes with the position of being the goaltender. I understand that. And really, Steve has been, I think he's been pretty good throughout the course of the year. When you're only getting two goals scored for your team, in most cases, that makes it tough on the goaltender who can only give up one per night. Yeah, Steve, I, I, you know, Steve's had a, the numbers don't show it, but uh, you look at the games that he's played, uh, he's played very well for us. He's working really diligently with Ian Clark, um, and he's changed his game a little bit, and certainly there's a bit of a transition there, but uh, I've been really impressed with Steve's approach. He hasn't gotten down with, uh, with the record or the numbers, and uh, he's continued to work really hard at it. And, uh, and again, he had a good week last week. If you look at uh, uh, what he did in the net, it was a pretty good week, so hopefully he can build off that. All right, two more things I want to ask you about. Number one, Ryan Johansson, you made the decision this week 
that he will stay. He'll play in that 10th game. That first year of the contract will kick in. What were all the factors that went into that decision for you? Well, first, he's, he's helping us win some games. He's got two game-winning goals, and I know game-winning goals can be a funny stat, but the fact is he scored two goals and we won both games. Um, and he certainly looks, as time goes on here, he has his peaks and valleys like any young player is going to be, but uh, as time has gone on here, he looks better and better. He looks more like an NHL player. And in fact, we've seen spurts where he looks like a really good NHL player. So that was the first thing. Um, the second thing is uh, what's best for Ryan. Uh, you know, we just think that given that he's going to play here, he's going to play some minutes here. He has an opportunity to practice with NHL players. He has an opportunity to work with our strength coach, Kevin Collins, because he needs to get stronger. That's going to really accelerate his development more than anything is his strength and natural maturity. Uh, so uh, we just thought it, it's best for our team. It's best for Ryan. And uh, we thought it was, uh, you know, we thought it was the right decision, obviously, to keep him here. And we'll see how it goes. If we get to the point, this doesn't mean he can't go back to Portland. We don't have any plans to send him back to Portland. But uh, we'll see how it goes. And uh, if he continues to progress, then there'll be, uh, he'll be here for the rest of the year. Scott, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Bob. That's General Manager Scott Housen. I'm Bob McElligot. Thanks for watching Jackets TV, presented by Ohio Health.